Hello, my name is Nguyen Kat, and in this video I will be going over everything you need to know about the FOE Event Set Builder. This is a new tool I have been working on, where you can design your own event set designs and get immediate feedback on what they will produce. Uh, so in this video I will be going over everything you need to know about all of these options, what this is, how to move around, move buildings and so on. Uh, I won't be going into details on any specific sets. Uh, the sets you see in front of me here, I already went over in the uh, fall event videos, if you want to see those. Uh, in the future, I'll also have a piazza set video planned, so stay tuned for that. And in this video, it's all about how this tool works. There are timestamps in the description. So yeah, without further ado, let's jump straight into it. So at the top here, you will see two uh, links. To buttons and here we have a written guide over how things work so if you want to look at that you can see look at that here we have a few example builds uh, and some general stuff at the time of recording it's currently the fall event set so here I have a few links to some fall event sets that you can use and share if you want uh, but yeah that will probably change once the fall event is over so let's jump into all of these. Let's start with the add building tab. Here we can, well, add a building. So here you can choose from which set you want to add building from. So from the cherry garden or the harvest barn is probably the hot, hot topic at the moment. Here you can choose from all the different buildings. Uh, you can choose the level of a building. You can choose what age of a building. And here below you can see all you need to know. Here you have the size of the building, 4 by 3 Road is required, and here you have all the stats. And which stat it would, stats, uh, what it gives with all of these bonuses. You can change the level, for example. You'll see it has fewer bonuses. This specific building. Change age, you'll see the values change according to that. And then you just click add building, and here you have the building. So, that's the Add Building tab. Now let's go over to the Current Building tab. If you click on a building, you get uh, all sorts of information about this building. So you can see which set it is from, which building, age, level, and if the building is connected. Uh, here, for example, this building is connected, so it will count uh, as, uh, in the production overview. So here we go here for example, this is connected and it will count. So 24 points, but if I disconnect it, you lose all the stats from this. But disconnected buildings still count towards the neighbor buildings. So yeah, here you can select if you want it to be connected or disconnected. And yeah, here you see all the stats and also how many current bonuses it gives. So this for example, it gives zero bonuses because it's not connected to any neighbor building. This, for example, only has two of three, so you won't get this last bonus, and so on. Uh, if you want to remove a building, you can click the Remove button, or you can click uh, the Delete or Backspace key on your keyboard. So, that's the current building tab. Let's look at the production overview. So, first of all, let's look at the bottom bar here. This is just a quick overview of what I think are the most uh, important or the stats that most people are interested in. That's a list of stats I'm interested in, so it might not be for everyone, but that's the stats I'm interested in. So here you can see all the stats from those. And as you already saw, and I will get back to it later, if I select some buildings, these stats here will only show the, uh, the stats for the selected buildings. So with this set, for example, you have 26 forge points, 30 goods, and 12 attack. And here you can also see per tile if you're interested in that. So 0 0.72 forge points per tile. That's almost three times as good as uh, Shrine of Knowledge. So that's quite good. And again, if you want to be careful, for example, you will see some quick stats of what this will give. Uh, you can also see the full production overview. This will include all you need to know. Uh, so all stats. As you can see here, the population happiness, four point medals, coins, attack, defense, coin boost, supply boost, and so on. So, 
under the full production overview, you have two tabs, all sets or per set. All sets will show stats for all the select all the sets in in the uh, that you have been working on. So if you, for example, have these fault sets, but then if you also have some cherry sets, for example, some piazza set, all of these will be combined in these tabs here. Or you can do per set, where only the selected set will uh, count for these these productions. Down below here, this will always show the for all buildings or the selected buildings. So these total and per tile, these are the same. So that's all I want to say about per set. Uh, only difference is that you select which set. So for all sets, you have the total, which gives you the total raw numbers. And again, if you select a building, only those will show here. So you have uh, population, happiness, watch points, goods, attack, and so on. Uh, you can close these if you want, if you're only interested in Fortune, for example. And then you have the per tile, which is just the same, but with per tile instead. Uh, here we have two fields, empty tiles and road tiles. Uh, these are for you to manually enter uh, tiles if you want. So this set, for example, need two row tiles there. So for the per tile count, perhaps you want to include two tiles here. So you enter a number and click enter and this will be updated and use two row tiles as well. I usually don't care about that but if you're interested you can manually enter that here. Uh, there's no automatic detection of that but perhaps perhaps in the future if you have time. But yeah. So yeah that's it for the production overview. Now let's get into saving and loading. So when you want to save a set you click save build and you see the three links are generated. First you have a string. In this string, string for example, if you want to save it, you can save it to uh, on your local computer for example. Uh, or we have a full link instead. And if you copy that, here you have the full link. And then if you want to open this again, you copy that and open it in a new wind window. And there we go. And also there's a third option, which is an automatically generated bit.ly link. Now bit.ly is just a simple link shortener. As you can see, this link is very long. And the way these links work is quite simply that all of these buildings are encoded into the string. So for example, this, this is a building, this is a building, this is a building and so on. So that's all these, this, string is, it's all these buildings, location, everything about them. So this bit.ly link is that link um, automatically shortened. I do want to caution you though, if you receive a bit.ly link, uh, if you receive a bit.ly link from some, someone you don't know, uh, it's always smart to check the link because you don't know what's behind the link. So if you, for example, go to this check short URL, there are probably other methods as well. If you copy this link that I just created, expand, and here you can see the expanded link. And here you can see that it's from the website that you want to use. So you can enter it, or you can simply use the bit.ly link here. And you will get to the, to the link. So yeah, let's close this. I can be here, it's a bit laggy. There we go. So, uh, for imp uh, for loading a building, you can, for example, load this string. Um, if I just delete this, then if I load the string, the scene will be cleared and you will load in the buildings. But then you can also import a building. So to remove that, here we have a button, how to import. So if you open that, you will see this. You will see a short, short description on how to import. So I will copy this. And to import, you do need Foley Helper. So if you don't have that installed, this sadly won't work. Uh, so you need to go to your game. And now you need to open the console or the uh, inspector menu uh, on Windows as Control Shift I. And you will open this. Or alternatively, uh, because you do need Foley Helper, you can left click on the Foley Helper inspect and then got console so here you have two options you can 
copy this thing and then enter, then copy the string. Or alternatively, you get to copy and oh, ah, screw that, just do this, copy. And then you go back to the tool, you paste that into the string. And usually this will freeze the tool for a few seconds, so just wait for it to become responsive again. Usually takes takes a few seconds. Oh, and because this this is a very long string, so for some reason the window struggles with it. I'm not quite sure. So okay, so there we are, responsive again. Load build. And uh, here we have my city. So here we have all the sets in my city. If you go back to my city. If it was a bit laggy, here you can see that I have uh, some cherry sets, piazza, Celtic, and also some winter village, which is quite an interesting thing. So yeah, here you can see all you need to know from my cherry sets give me 250 attack, which is very nice in my opinion. So yeah, that's importing. Let's finally look at this uh, settings. Here we have four options. So one is show the building initials, this will just simply toggle the initials on or off. It's up to you if you want to use them or not, perhaps you prefer just using using the colors to uh, separate, or perhaps you want the, want the initials. And as you can see there is also this red outline. This is the maximum size of a building, uh, of a city, as of now. Uh, but if you don't want to see that, you can just toggle it off. And then these two options are, for me, very powerful when I work with uh, this tool. So the first one, show buildings requiring roads. This will highlight in yellow all the buildings that require roads. So, for example, for the piazza set, you see that all of these need road. That's quite a lot of them. For the Celtic set, you have these three. And for the Sherry Garden, not a lot. And for the winter garden, none at all. So that's very cool. Then lastly, you have show number of connections. And this will show how many neighbors each building has. And this will show it relative to how many it needs. So if the building is green, <coughs> sorry, that means that all the buildings are fully connected. They have all their bonuses. <coughs> Just a quick sip of water. But for example, in the cherry set here, you can see that the Emperor, the Gong, and the Sen, they are yellow. Yellow means that they're missing one neighbor. Uh, orange means two, red means three, and so on. So this will sh quickly show how many uh, connections each of these have. So for example, the Winter Garden, uh, Winter Village set, which is a quite interesting one. Uh, here you see the Helmbach, which is one I'm interested in. It gives three attack when it's fully connected. But here you see that all of these five Helm books are all fully connected. So, yeah, just quick aside, this quite interesting design gives 15 attack or 0 0.83 attack per tile, which is not the best, but I think it's quite a unique and cool thing to have. Oh, okay. Let's not go back there then. <laughs> so yeah, uh, that's these settings here. Now let's finally go into controlling everything in this scene. You have seen me use most of the things already. Uh, so let's just quickly go over it. You can move around uh, by left-clicking and dragging. This will move you around in the scene. Uh, you can zoom in and out with a scroll wheel. Uh, on a trackpad, that's usually two fingers up or down. Um, to move a building, you simply, again, left click and drag. This will drag the building. As you can see, the buildings cannot be placed on top of other buildings. Uh, this is made to make it easier not to overlap things, because that will, if two buildings happen to overlap, they would incorrectly be counted as neighbors, so, yeah. Uh, you can also delete a building, uh, remove as I showed, but you can also hit the delete key if you want. Uh, and now, another very powerful tool, I think, is selection of buildings. So you can select multiple buildings. You can see these buildings will be highlighted. And as I mentioned before, the stats will now be updated to only show the stats for the sele selected building. So if I select here, for example, it will only show the stats for the piazza set. 
or for the cherry set or for these this part of the cherry set and so on now when you have building selected you can move the entire thing around like this uh, here you need to be careful only the building you hold can't be placed on top of each other so if you're not careful these will be placed on top of other buildings which will break everything so be careful about that and the reason why the buildings are grayed out is simply because of performance issues. It was too laggy to drag a lot of buildings at the same time, so <laughs> that's a simple reason for that. Um, so yeah, you can move uh, many buildings at the same time, which is really cool. You can copy, copy buildings, copy and paste, so on Windows, Control c on Mac, Command-C, so Control-C on Windows, and then Command-V, or, or Control-V, and you pasted this on your mouse location so this is a, an easy way to simply get a lot of building blocks to build with or you know uh, there might be sets that you can stack on top of each other and this for example you can see that I have these are the same modules so I can for example copy two of these like this drag them over copy this over and now I have copied this design but extended it with a little bit of a top error. So that's some simple things you can do. And then one final thing with all the buildings selected you can click delete or backspace and all of the selected buildings will be deleted. So uh, now I went over that quite quickly but I didn't want this to be too long video. I see it's already 17 minutes so that's a lot longer than I wanted but timestamps in the description if you're already here you probably might have used that but yeah you can see all the stuff here uh, all the stuff you need to know and if you have any questions post them in the description if you have any suggestions i would love to hear them in the description uh, other than that thank you very much for watching i hope this helped you get a overview of how this works and I will probably update the tool in the future, so in the future some of this might not be completely accurate. But if that's the case, I'll do my best to add a note to this video. So, thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you in the future.